In this video, we're going to give an overview of the application. So that means that we're gonna talk about the statistics for what you're facing when they apply to either medicine or dentistry. We're gonna look at the application timeline and then how we at FutureDoc divide that into four distinct phases to help you segment the preparation to help you just focus on one thing at a time and maximize the chances of success. So to take a leaf out of Sun Tzu, first thing is to know thy enemy. So up here, I've put the stats for the last few years for medicine and as you can see, what has happened is that there were a peak in numbers of applications during the COVID pandemic and actually during that time they removed the cap. So normally the GMC, the General Medical Council, has a cap on the number of places that they will allow universities to have for medicine and doctors that they will put through to ensure a level of quality. Now during COVID they actually took that off so the cap came off and the places went up to ten and a half thousand. Also at that time because doctors and medicine were very much in the media and at the forefront of people's attention, the number of people applying also hit an all-time high. Now, since the pandemic, the numbers have not gone back down to their pre-COVID levels. However, the number of places has. So there are now only 7,500 places, including graduates and internationals in all of that, for medicine in the UK. Also, you'll notice that the number of reapplicants has increased year on year, and we're typically hitting about a fifth of people applying are applying for a second time or more. Now, the numbers for each of those elements do vary year on year, but one thing that is consistent is the trend of medicine getting more and more competitive year on year, and it is now the most competitive it's ever been. Typically, we're looking at about a 16% success rate for people applying to the undergraduate course. Now, that changes a lot for graduates. That's about 3% or actually slightly under 3%. And then for internationals, it's about a 6% success rate of those applying. Now for dentistry, the numbers are less well published, but there are about 1,100 places available every year, and it has about a 15% success rate. So actually in recent years, it has overtaken medicine for the undergraduate level for its level of competitiveness. Now really, we don't want to worry ourselves too much with these competition ratios because essentially all it does is gives us the bar for where we need to be. As I said, my ethos us is to raise ourselves a level that they are so good that they're not really worried about the competition because they're the kind of person that are very difficult to reject and that's what we're going to talk about in the next few videos as to how we can make ourselves one of those students. Now the next thing I want to do is show you the application timeline because that is going to orientate everything around our efforts with applying to either medicine or dentistry. So on the screen you'll see that is quite a long process and what I say is that the year that you submit your application you should really be spending a year prior to that with your preparation. So let's take an example, let's say if you're planning to start medical or dental school in September 2027 you would actually be submitting your application in September 2026 and then I would recommend starting September 2025. Now this is optimal and I'm gonna show you later why because we break it down into distinct phases. Of course, we get people who come very last minute and yes, it's more stressful and more chaotic and we have to put a lot of intense work in and we can get people over the line with that sort of short-term preparation. But I'm certain that if those people had come to us sooner in the process, firstly, they would have found it less stressful. They would have probably raised themselves to an even higher application level, which would have meant that they could have got into a more competitive university or maybe one that they really had their heart set on rather than settling for what you can do coming last minute and kind of scrambling around to really uh, clutch at straws and get what you can in terms of the med schools available to you. So going back to the application timeline again, which by the way, if you would like a copy, you can get that for free on our website, but you will see that everything works backwards from an application point of view from the May of the year that they will go to either medical or dental school. So going back to the previous example of say they start the course in September 2027, Everything will be done by May 2027. That is when offers are dished out and accepted and all of that sort of stuff comes to a final point. So again, working back from that May, they would have submitted their application the September of the year prior and really should be preparing or starting the journey the year prior to that. Now, from the point of preparation when they start, there are things like work experience, the aptitude tests, writing a personal statement, choosing medical or dental schools, and then interviews. Those are the main five steps and the main areas of focus of how we prepare people here at FutureDoc. Now they come in different orders, but now that you understand the timeline of it, to make it easy, I break it down into phases. Now the reason I break it down into these four phases is because 
If you do this, you can set your focus intensely on that particular phase and as much as is possible, almost tick it off, forget about it and move on to the next one. Now of those four phases, the first is what I broadly call CV preparing. Now you'll hear me say several times that interviews are the final culmination of the application, but the interview performance is not about what you do in the two weeks before, it's about everything that you do in the 18 months prior. So this is where it all starts. This is where you are building yourself into the kind of candidate that, like I say, is very difficult to reject because you are just coming across as the real deal because you have put that time in. This is the phase where we want to start early, get everything in place so that it's on autopilot and just letting that snowball accumulate. And really what happens is experiences compound the earlier you start because you'll do something great, it will lead on to other experiences which will give you more stuff to talk about and those will branch out and it'll just keep going and by the time the student has started a year prior and they get to 18 months later when they're sitting their interviews they have just accumulated so much stuff and like I say benefited from that compounding effect that they are a completely transformed person. I see it with my students all the time that we get them and look back kind of around this sort of time and look back to the person they were and it's night and day the, the transfer is absolutely fantastic because we started early and let time do its thing to allow all of these experiences to accumulate. Now the second phase is what I will broadly call exams and preparation around those. Now it will start with typically if they're a graduate student taking the GAMSAT exam that starts early on in this phase. However for most people who and the rest who aren't doing that it will be around probably A-level exam preparation, it will probably be university exam preparation if they're a graduate. Then it will be all about preparing for the UCAT and starting to put the elements of a personal statement in place. Now the third and arguably the most hectic of these phases is what I call crunch time because this is where it's all happening and it's the summer prior to submitting the application and it will be a very busy time. It will be a culmination of some of the preparation and some of the things that have been organized in phases one and two. So for example this includes sitting the UCAT, maybe they in the student has been trying to arrange some work experience but feasibly they couldn't do it until summer so it's actually execution of the shadowing experience. We're going to talk about the different types of work experience in another video but usually that is the one that is done in summer if not better before. The next one is getting the personal statement ready so finally putting all of the experience again some of it which was gained in that summer together along with all the other stuff to write a really outstanding personal statement or whatever the replacement for the personal statement will be, which we'll talk about in the personal statement video. Other things that are really important is choosing the right medical schools, and we've got a whole video dedicated to that because it is such an important element arguably the most important one. Then aside from the shadowing experience, your child might have arranged either a summer school or a research internship during the summer, which they'll want to execute on. And then finally in September, so at the end of the summer is when the UCAS application window opens and it'll be time to put all of that together and to submit their application on the UCAS portal. So now would be a good time to talk about UCAS. It's the University and Colleges Admissions Service and it's essentially the big portal where anyone who's applying to university will submit their application. Now there are some private universities that are not included in that, some medical, not so much any dental schools, but medical schools do have private ones that are off UCAS and you apply to directly, but the majority of medical schools will be on this portal. Now UCAS opens its doors for applications to be submitted, usually a week into September. Now the really important thing to remember is for medicine and dentistry applications is that UCAS, the submission deadline, is much, much sooner than all the other courses. So typically the other courses are around the end of January. For medicine and dentistry, it's usually around the 15th of October. It does fluctuate by a bit, but typically around that date. So a very short window within which to submit the application. So during that phase three, there will be a lot of stuff going on, personal statements being written, like I said, also needing to get tutor references, either from somebody at university or school, and usually the institutions will be able to advise you on that, but other things to consider. So a lot going on, and like I say, it's all about the preparation prior in those phases two and one, but then it's all about interviews. So once they have submitted their application, it takes a couple of months for universities to decide who to invite to interview, then they will get a date, and then they will go and be interviewed and we'll talk about that and how that works later. But essentially, they will then go through the interview 
prep phase and actually doing the interviews and then we'll typically find out a few weeks to maybe a couple of months later like I said with that final deadline being in May to make sure that all offers are made and all um, answers to the offers as well are accepted. Now if you've done well enough to get more than one offer they will be asked to respond to these offers by choosing a firm choice and a backup choice. Now of course the firm is their first choice university and their backup is typically reserved when people have a firm choice that has quite high grade requirements and then they will typically go for a backup that has a low grade requirement so that if on the day of A levels or, or maybe degree results day they don't get the high a grade that's required for their first choice they will at least be able to meet the grade requirement for the one below and that's the one they'll end up going to so if for example the student chooses a firm that has a grade requirement of a star aa and a backup of three a's and on a level results day they find out that they got the three a's instead of the one a star plus two a's they would then go to their backup university and that would be the one that they end up uh, going to and joining. Now you don't always have to choose the one with the highest grade requirement as your firm or your first choice. I personally went to the university that had the lower grade requirement because simply that was the one that I wanted to go to. However that left me in a situation that if I didn't get the grades for my firm then the conditional one was a high requirement anyway so that meant that I would have got into neither. But realistically in that situation it didn't matter regardless because if I hadn't made the grade for the second one then I wouldn't be going to either of them no matter what order I put them in. Really, this only applies when you have a university that you have your heart set on and it might be a little bit of a stretch and you just want a safe option just in case you don't think you're quite going to make that grade. So there we go. Those are the major steps that occur during the application cycle and should give you a bit of an idea of when you can expect to be doing each of them and really the reality of how long it takes to prepare to make sure that you're building a really strong application.